My name is Justin Frost. I'm from Midland. Uh, last year I started a business doing uh, restoration and cleaning work on headstones. Um, we're standing here in Jerome Township Cemetery, which is, I came here to do, to take some photos for Find the Grave, some volunteer photos, and this was like in complete disrepair. Uh, stones were laying everywhere. Um, it was, it was really just kind of disgraceful. So I got talking to uh, some people in the community, found out that there was actually already a movement in place to get some funding to do some work in here. And uh, last year we came in here and we set 256, reset 256 headstones, cleaned a whole bunch of them. And uh, now I'm continuing some work uh, in repairing some that are broken and uh, need some repair work done to them. So, Can you show us a couple examples of the ones that you've already repaired and the ones you're currently working uh, on? Actually, the first one I repaired is over here. Uh, this is Eliza Sanford. She's actually the wife of Charles Skiff Sanford. And uh, they are the founding or the namesake of Sanford, I guess. Um, and this was already repaired. This top piece had broken off and somebody had epoxied this back together. And it was a good stronghold, so I just went in and filled it in with some mortar to protect that epoxy that was already there. Do you have some before pictures of each one of these two I so do. I can post yep. before and yeah, after so people can see the difference that you've done here? <laughs> I got a ton of pictures that I'll, and I'll send you some of the good ones here. Perfect. Um, so that one I, I've done some infill on. Uh, over here, we've got a uh, Civil War veteran and his son. They actually share this headstone, and then you can see his military marker behind it. Um, so this was in three pieces, and it's almost in four pieces. And it was, the top two pieces were leaning up against a tree over there. And uh, there was big chunks of old repair that were on it still. This is some old epoxy that they used. I don't know what the heck it was, but it was terrible stuff. And uh, so I had to chip all that off and clean each piece and, and prep it. And then I epoxied it and I sandwiched it with two by fours and held it in, in place. And now I'm just waiting until I get a couple more ready and I'm gonna do some infill on, on all of them all at once. Every time I mix up infill material, I mix up too much. So <laughs> I end up throwing a bunch away, but. Uh, you know what the main material is that they're using now to make these stones? Well, so this is a white marble. Um, and they kind of are getting away from marble nowadays because it, it's so soft and, and uh, doesn't, it doesn't really hold up well. You go to any old cemetery and uh, most of the broken ones are going to be these old marble, gray and white marble or uh, sandstone. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of work to get it done, but it's, it's really worth it in the end. Um, if this had just stayed over there against the tree for another 10 years, who knows what kind of shape it would be in, if, if the pieces would even be here. There's multiple stones throughout this uh, cemetery that over the years, different sextons have found pieces laying here and there and they're just gone. There's, here's a, a small one that I worked on uh, last week. This piece is completely missing still, but I epoxied this piece on here and I actually found this way over there in a pile. Wow. <laughs> and I just happened to look at it and I said, I think I know that goes somewhere. And uh, I brought it over here and it fit perfect. So I just epoxied wow. that back on. So that one doesn't actually have a name on it? Uh, so that would be uh, a foot stone, or it's possibly a, sm a young child that's buried with, with the mother. a mother. Okay. So um, I haven't really dug into the records or anything to, to mm -hmm. figure that out yet. Um, but eventually, you know, it's kind of on my list. And, and this is, this is a, a the headstone of John W.H. Brooks, who's probably, 
I think the most famous person in this cemetery. He uh, was born in 1811 on a ship, apparently. Um, he came to America. I think both of his parents uh, died on the ship. So when he got here, he was an orphan. And he doesn't, didn't really know who his parents were. Uh, died in 1914. He's a, a veteran of two wars. He uh, was shot three times during the Civil War. Uh, and the stories I've heard said that he still has all three bullets inside his body, but I, I don't know that for sure. And then he took a saber slash across the face. Um, so lived, lived to be, what, 103 years old. Lived right here in Sanford. Um, there's a lot of information out there on, on him and a very fascinating story. But this, his stone was actually, I think it was a victim of, of vandalism. It was laying down here. You can still see the outline of it. And uh, you can see here where it hit, right here where, when it fell over. And uh, unfortunately, the topper piece is uh, missing a big section. And I'm thinking about cutting it off and, and putting it back on. But um that was quite the that's probably the biggest one we reset um yeah that one th it was nice to get this one back up just mm -hmm. with the story and everything you know it's it's uh he's a significant person and then down here we've got um Hiram Thornton who was also a civil war veteran and uh, spent some time in the Andersonville uh, Confederate prison. Um, there's a copy of his diary rolling around. I think uh, his, some of his descendants have it. And uh, it talks about how when he got home, he was so famished and, and basically was just a, a skeleton with skin. And his wife worked to get him back up to a healthy weight and and his diary talks about some time that he spent in the prison and and uh, one of the things that a lot of people think is that you know the confederates and the union soldiers were so mean to each other they were so nasty when they had prisoners of war in their camp but in his diary it talks about actually how nice the uh, the prison guards were and how they would try to give them food whenever they could because that was the biggest thing was uh, there was not enough food. Um, so with not enough food was a lot of disease and a lot of death and stuff like that, you know, so. But uh, yeah. Then uh, over here, we'll just kind of make our way around, I guess. Over here, uh, this one that's still laying down, actually, we uh, have a descendant in the area, and uh, she actually came over here years ago and, and found that top piece laying way down here, like had washed down the hill. And uh, this is r really fragile, and we're talking about possibly pouring some concrete and laying it down and putting it back together, but she's a little apprehensive about it. This would be the oldest death in this cemetery. And I say death because he died in 1869, but he wasn't originally buried here. So his body was moved from another cemetery to here. And I tried to do some research on this cemetery and find out what, when the first burial in this cemetery was. And there's really not a whole lot of information. In fact, the information for when this cemetery was established says it was established between 1868 and 1878, sometime in that range. So um, some of these earliest deaths probably were buried somewhere else and then moved here. Who knows when though, I don't. Uh, and a lot of the records are not great. <laughs> This is the one you're currently working on? So this is one of them that I'm working on. Um, this is another one of those 
this top this larger top piece was actually laying behind it leaning up against this foundation and this piece no nowhere to be found and i happened to be here one day this is probably about a month ago and uh, i was working yeah it was when i was working on eliza sanford stone and i saw this piece laying over there and i thought man that's about two inches thick it's got a nice straight edge on it it's it's got to belong somewhere so i started walking around and i found where it belonged so i stuck it back together and uh, i'm waiting to see if this piece is going to lighten up some before i do the infill on this so so is that kind of where you start is mostly kind of if the stone's in two pieces getting it into one piece and then working on infill and, and cleaning it up yeah um Really the most important thing is you have to inspect it to see if it's even capable of being repaired. And a lot of people will think, well, it's all there. Why can't you stick it together? Well, if you look at this stone back here, um, you can see that it's starting to what they call sugar, where it's gonna start to granulate. It's gonna turn into dust basically. And if that was, all the way around you can see that it, it kind of is starting to do it around the edges if it was in a lot worse shape it probably would be best to just not do anything with it try to get the information off of it and log it somewhere maybe um, one of the I went to a seminar a couple about two months ago actually almost now and uh, there's a lady doing all the same type of work down in Union City and she gets these brass plates made and she affixes them to the foundation so it's got all the information on there that way when the stone is not legible anymore the information is still there um, but i think it's important to try to keep the nat the historical monument you know because that's what this is this is this is history and you'll never replace it even if you got a replacement the original is always best so that's what kind of motivates my work here is keeping the history rather than replacing it, you know. That was actually my next question. Why are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> well, so the project we did last year, um, we kind of, we wrapped it up right around fall, just before it started getting cold. Uh, everybody was getting out in the woods deer hunting and stuff and, and uh, when the weather got nice this year, I just thought, this is an unfinished job. I have to, I have to finish it, I have to. It, it's too important to try to preserve this history, even if, you know, a lot of people don't, don't really care anymore, but eventually somebody will. You know, maybe 30 years down the road, this person's descendant may come to see this grave and they'll be glad that it's here for them to see. I know I was when I found my third great grandfather's grave in, in Midland. Um, it's just, it's, it's one of those feelings of being able to see something that represents your ancestor. Um, it's a good feeling, you know, when you can, when you can tie something to that person, you know, so kind of relating this to the flood. We're on a little bit of a hill here now, but Stanford Dam is literally right straight through there. Do you know how much water came up in the cemetery? I don't so, think there was any on the north side, right? It, there nope, was some down in here though? No, nope, this side here, uh, we actually, there was a lot of mud down in this area. The, the water came over the road and uh, came over the road, it actually, piled up a bunch of sand along that fence. And we had some uh, Northwood University football players came and helped. And we kind of trucked it out here with uh, wheelbarrows and got rid of it. But uh, that fence is all bent up. And best I can figure, the water was about up to here in this area. So we'd be probably about knee deep right now. Um, and this was all mud and there was tons of debris over in that area. And these two headstones here, um, in fact, we didn't even know they were here 
Uh, about three weeks into our project, I was walking through here and I saw two perfect rectangles of like cracked mud. And I said, there's something there. So I got a shovel and I started cleaning it off and there was about an inch of mud and it started to, started to dry and just started cracking, you know, and uh, pulled those up, so. That's and amazing. Then, um, I know uh, some of the trailer park there had about a foot of water and I don't think anything got into any of the homes, but. Um, so there wasn't any caskets that came floating up or anything like that? <laughs> no. Nope, there, uh, this, is, this is actually uh, a really nice um, uh, sand right here and it's got like a four inch layer of, of like this peat dirt and it, it really didn't disturb any of the ground of it but it did put a layer on here. They say that there's a lot of burials down in this area. This is like the oldest section I guess and uh, they assume that at one time they had wooden crosses hmm. and they just deteriorated and they're gone and they really don't know who's buried here or where, but they know that there's more burials here. Um, this stone, I think uh, 2014, this was photographed for Find a Grave and it was laying down right here. And uh, same type of thing. When the water came through, it washed a bunch of mud on it. And a couple weeks later, actually it was probably about a week before we left and finished the project for the year, I saw an outline there. So we dug it up and uh, it had been, like I said, it had been photographed in 2014 and it, had been, it was laying down then. And it was this dark, almost black color. And we uh, stood it up, cleaned it up with some water, sprayed some cleaner on it. And that's what it looks like now, you know. That's from 1903. So, so now you have a wife and kids. What do they think of you doing this work? <laughs> my kids love to come and help me. In fact, uh, my daughter kind of wanted to come with me today, but she's she's a daddy's girl. But um, she, my kids love it. My wife kind of thinks it's weird, but you know, a lot of people. Some people just don't have a need to go to the cemetery. You know. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm, I'm imagining the comments in this video, people being like, "Well, it's so morbid that you're." in the Sanford Cemetery, but I think it is really important what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think there's, I think there's a, a definite need for something like this around here, you know. Um, that's what kind of motivated me to start my business was walking through the Midland City Cemetery where the grounds are kept up really nice and they do their best in there, but there's a lot of the same type of stuff going on in there. And almost every cemetery across America is plagued with the problem of deteriorating monuments, things that have gotten bumped or knocked over or, or sunk into the ground and just disappeared. That's another thing too. You know, some of these headstones, there's only this much sticking out of the ground. And we dug down and found out that they were a 40 inch tall monument. They sink. So, um, that was, that was the majority of the work was was uh, raising things up and getting some gravel under them so they don't sink anymore. Um, and I think all this started probably about five, six years ago. Uh, two ladies went to the township board and, and asked for permission to come in here and work. They just wanted to clean stuff. They just wanted to go around and clean the monuments and, and get them ready for if this was ever ever came to fruition, you know. And uh, they, the township went to um, the uh, Midland Area Community Foundation and they got a grant from them to, to spend some money in here and they, then they just needed somebody to do the work. And it just so happened that that was the stage where it was at when I came over here and started noticing things. And I said, well, I can do the work. And uh, me and I think six or seven other people and then there was some other people that came and volunteered some time here and there um, and it took we started 
the first week of June, uh, we just came over here, had like five people with rakes and a wheelbarrow and a tarp, and we raked the entire hill, got all the sticks and all the debris and stuff, and cut a bunch of the weeds and stuff from around the, the plots. And then uh, we went clear into September, I think it was after the start of bow season, I was still out here. And I didn't want to be, but <laughs> I was still out here working. And uh, I think the second week of October, we, we just, we called it quits. So are they still funding your work here? No, no. Um, this, everything I'm doing now is, is out of my own pocket. Uh, I have had some generous individuals that have uh, given some uh, donations. Although I don't, I haven't been asking for donations. People uh, want to, and I tell them where they can donate. And, and uh, where can they donate? People are going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a. I've just been telling people to to PayPal me or a Venmo, um, and I can send you the links for those. Yep, I'll put in the description down below uh, if you want to check it out. And then uh, I also have the information on my YouTube channel, <laughs> which is Past Preservation. Um, and I do videos of all the work that I do. Pretty much everything that I've done is on my channel, uh, especially everything I've done in here. In fact, uh, I'm in the middle of filming that uh, five-piece stone right now. So, um, so if you want to tag along, make sure you follow him on that's YouTube. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And do you also have a business if people want to hire you to kind of go to a different yep. cemetery and redo and clean up their headstones? Yeah, my business is Past Preservation. Uh, I go about a hundred mile radius of Midland. Um, and obviously if there's more work, I can go farther than that. But, uh, and right now the majority of the work that I'm being hired to do is cleaning. Um, so I've got kind of a, a price set for, I go by the size of the stone rather than by hour, I know a lot of people do this. They go by hour. I don't. I don't believe that that's really that fair because I could come and do this stone in 20 minutes probably and walk away and it could be done. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, um, is there anything else that I forgot to ask that you think is important to say here? Boy, I don't know. Uh, I would say. Uh, if anybody wants to volunteer some time or if anybody wants to learn uh, any of these techniques or from the area, they want to come over, just get a hold of me and we can set something up. I've had a couple of people reach out to me and say that they wanted to help. I'm working on next year setting up some sort of teaching day uh, in the city cemetery in Midland where I can have a group of people and show some, clean, some basic cleaning. Um, and I'm also going to be doing some stuff with uh, the Coleman Historical Society next month um, to do some basic cleaning stuff there too. So uh, if you want to get involved, get a hold of me. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Justin Frost. You can find me on Facebook on my business profile, uh, Past Preservation. Or you can find me on YouTube. <laughs> I don't do Instagram or Twitter really. I do have accounts, but I, I don't really understand them. So. <laughs> All right, I want to thank you so much for your time and donating and getting Sanford Cemetery looking a little bit nicer here. So yeah, this, I mean, this is history. It's history. You gotta, it's got to be here for the future. Thanks for watching, and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below. As always, I just want to give a massive thanks to the people who support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of your contribution to keeping this channel going. Thank you.